Begin the current daf Masech this bracha is daf yud dal. We begin eight lines daf at the top of the yamad. We quickly review daf yud gimel. We spoke about the changing of a name, like we had from the daf before that, regarding changing Yaakov's name to Yisrael. That it was only secondary; you could still call him Yaakov. Whereas Avram Avinu, it's an isser, it's a prohibition to call Avram Avinu Avram. Then we finished the first parag, parag Meimasei. We began the second parag, parag Hayukayri, which continued on the theme regarding the halachas of Krishma and the brachas. And our Mishnah spoke about two halachas, primarily that of Kavana, having in mind when you're saying the Krishma, and regarding the prohibition of hefsek, of stopping in the middle. So we had Machlekes in the Mishnah, which our Gemara ultimately concluded at the end of the daf, qualifying what is this Machlekes regarding who you let a greet and when you let a greet. In the, in the Kriya Shema itself. And then another halacha that was mentioned in our Mishnah, which we're going to speak about in today's daf, is regarding the order of the Shema. Why Shema, then Mohim Shema, and then the Parsha of Vayemer. Then the Gemara discussed regarding this, that you need to have Kavana by the midst of Kriya Shema. Is that because Mitzvah Srich is Kavana? Is it for the Mitzvah you have to have a mind? I'm hidden the Kuch Bruchu, that you're coming to, to go and fulfill the Mitzvah? Or is it no, they just have to have a mind that you're doing the Kriya, that you're just reading something? Then we had a Machlekes regarding qualifying this halacha of what's the sources of, is it b'chalosh and shat v'shemeya? Could you say Krishna in any language that you know because it says shema? Or is it has to be in Lashna Kiddush because it says v'hayu? And then how do they explain the other ones? Pesukim. Then up until where do you need to have focus? We had four different interpretations. Either it's only the first pasuk or until the first two, three pesukim, according to Rashi and Taisis, uh, which is Alab Avecha, or the whole first parasha, or the whole Kriyashma itself. You need to have Kavana, which is a different Kavana, that of Pir Shamilis. You have to know the translation. You have to focus on the words itself. Then we spoke about the Allah that you, by Echad you have to be Marech. Like we said, it doesn't mean you have to say the Dal long, because actually then you might be mispronouncing the word Echad. Rather, it means to say, have a mind by the word Echad. And <laughs> the Rebbe's and others' customs that they only had Kavana by the first Pasig. Then we, we ended off by saying that you know, one is not supposed to lie on his back. And by Krishma, you're not even supposed to tilt and lay on your back. It's not respectful to the Kabbalah and Makshmaim in that way. And then the Daf itself ended off, like we said, regarding a clarification of Umeshiv, of the opinion of Remeir, because he really holds the ones you could greet are the ones you could respond to. It's not more lenient the way Rabbi Huda held. Now, the, some of the things we're going to speak about today's Daf and Brachas Daf Yadal, we are essentially in the beginning of Perak HaYukaire. We're continuing uh, regarding the laws of interrupting. Regarding, we mentioned in the previous Daf, regarding the Birchas Kriyashima, which was this Machlik Shemayin Yehuda, where you allowed to interrupt in the middle of the Birchas Kriyashima and for who? So then the Gemara continues on a related theme regarding Halal and Megillah. Do we say it's a Kabochem from Kriyashima, which is Dairaisa, and still you could be Mavsik in the middle? For sure, Halal and Megillah, which are only Durabonan? Or maybe do you say that Parsumi Nisa is Adif, that it's better, that the more severe Halal and Megillah, and you actually would not be able to interrupt at all? Then we're going to discuss this idea what's called Yomim She'in HaYochad Goymer HaHal, the days that an individual is not obligated to say Hal, which is only like a minig, like by Rish Chedish, and that's actually more lenient, and then you could interrupt even more than just a regular Hal and Megillah. Then the Gemara is going to continue with a similar phraseology, and therefore it introduces a whole different halacha, but it's just the same words of Tana Debei, and that the Rebbe responding in Bekach Klum, which the halacha is, is tasting like eating regarding fasting, regarding making a bracha, and we'll discuss that. Then the Gemara is going to continue regarding greeting another person by Birchus Kriyashma. How could you say that the halacha of a Mishnah that you could interrupt by Birchus Kriyashma, but this halacha that says you're not supposed to go and greet someone before Shema Nesri, and Kriyashma is before Shema Nesri. And so the Gemara is going to explain, well, that's all, when did we say you could greet someone that's only Ba'akroi, when you just happen to meet him. But seeking him out, you're right, it's prohibited before Shemayin Nesri because either Ba'menech Shavu or because it's like making a Bama. Also, regarding that you're not allowed to do your own private things before davening. And then we continue with the same Amoyer who's going to interpret a Pasuk of Savei Yol and Bali Pakit Ra. Two different interpretations regarding how to translate that Pasuk, and it's only brought in because it's the same Amoyer. Then the Gemara is going to go back to the Mishnah regarding Machlekes, regarding if you're allowed to interrupt between the parasha of Vayoymer and Emes Vayatsa Emes Vamunda, which is really, t- it's like Beina Prakim, but Rabbi Huda says, and that's the halacha, you're not allowed to interrupt between Hashem Lekechem and Emes, based on a Pasuk that actually puts Emes together with Hashem Lekechem. Then we're going to go to a Machlekes regarding, do we even say Vayoymer at night time? But the halacha is if you start, then you finish. But what's considered starting? And also that you need to mention Yitzis Mitzrayim by Leilis 
Either way, even if you're not going to say the parasha b'yim, you have to somehow mention Yitzis Mitzrayim. Then we're going to go again and mention the pin of Rabbi Shub ben Karcha in the Mishnah. What's the order of Shema Bahayim Shemaya and Bayim? And the Gemara is going to introduce another opinion that of Rabbi Shimba Yichai. Now the reason why that's important because the Gemara is going to continue and it's in its havim and it's going to think that Rav followed Rabbi Shub ben Karcha that he first said Krishma and then he put on Tefillin because Krishma is Omachal Shemaim and Tefillin is doing the mitzvahs. The Gemara rejects that because that's only by reading al Shemaim before al mitzvahs, not doing. You don't re- you don't have to, you don't do a kriya before the actual doing of the mitzvahs. So the Gemara is actually going to say that no, Rav holds you actually as our custom is you put on tefillin and then kriya shema because if not, it's like you're saying false testimony on yourself and it's like bringing a karb out of mecha. The story was that yes, one time he did kriya shema and then tefillin simply because the messenger was late. He didn't have his film and it was already Zaman Krishma that was passing, and therefore he said Krishma and then put on film. And then our Gemara is going to conclude with the morning routine regarding a whole order that someone should do it in that order. And one of them is washing your hands. If you don't have water, you could wipe it on something that you could just wipe it on. And you're actually not allowed to go after water if it's Zaman Krishma, but for davening, then the Gemara is going to qualify certain measurements how far you can and should go regarding davening, because you're supposed to wash your hands for davening mm-hmm. and for Krishma. So again, we continue. Begin Dafi Dalam and Aleph, eight lines down at the top of the Ahmed, where the share is sponsored by Torah Anytime, Dafa Chaim, and the Thomas River Learning Center. So, again, as we mentioned, the Gemara continues from the theme of the previous Daf regarding this about interrupting by the Birchus Krishma and Krishma. So, the Gemara continues similarly, Bayimene Echi was his name, who was Tana de Berbchia. He was someone that learned in the yeshiva of Rebchia. He asked Rebchia from the Rosh Hashiva, he asked him the following question. The howl of Megillah, howl, and by reciting Megillah, says to by the Megillah, Mao Sheyavsig, what's the halacha? Can you interrupt in the middle to greet somebody? What's the question? The Gemara explains. Do we say, I'm reading a Kabbalah, we say it's a Kabbalah, Krishma, the Raisa Paisig, if Krishma, which is biblical, you still let it interrupt, as we said in the halacha of the Mishnah, according to either interpretation, but you'll not interrupt to greet someone. So, how do I have to tell you that you can interrupt, which is actually the halacha, that it is for sure, just like Krishma, that you could interrupt in the middle to greet someone when it's necessary, when it's allowed. Do you say that no, it's actually more severe. Parsumi Nisa, that the, publicizing the miracle is other, is better, it's actually more severe, and actually wouldn't be able to stop in the middle of Hala Megillah, because Parsumi Nisa, we know, is a very severe halacha. On Malay Paisik, he said to him, no, you're allowed to interrupt, there's nothing wrong with it, it's not any worse than that of Krishna. Now, Amr Rabbi qualifies this halacha, and he says, Yamim Goymer Ben Azal. Now, although the word Goymer here means to, usually means finish, but as the Mepharshim Tais is busy with this, it means to be Kairi. It means in a, a day that an individual has to recite Hal, meaning it's an obligation on every single person, which are 21 years, 21 days in the year, as the Gemara says in Erech and Yudam and Aleph, that everyone has to say Hal. So then it's severe like Kriyishma. Bein Perik La Perik Paisik means to say it's severe, but it also has the leniency of Kriyishma. That between the chapters, you're allowed to interrupt. But between the chapters, then you're not allowed to interrupt. But the Yom Shein Yachid Goyim Ben Nasahal. So although some interpret this word that when he doesn't finish it, which would mean Chatsi Hal, the the Rishonim many of them explain no, it doesn't mean that that you don't finish it. Meaning a day that an individual doesn't have to say Hal, which is on Rish Chaydish. Rish is just a minig. There's no obligation for an individual to say Hal. Then a fellow be Emtza Perik Paisik in the middle of a chapter, you're allowed to interrupt the middle. You're allowed to respond to every single person that greets you. It doesn't have the same severity factor as that of a day when the person has to say hal, which are 21 days in the year. Of that, is really so when it's, a, let's say, a day like Rish Chedish, a day that you don't have to say hal, it's just a minig, that then you're allowed to interrupt for any single person. But Vaharav Bar Shava, it's the name of a person, Ikla Lagabe de Ravina, he went to Ravina. And V'yam She'ena Yechid Ger Mesa Hal Hav, it was a day that they don't, you don't have an obligation to say hal. It's a minig. V'loi Pasig and he didn't stop for him, he didn't greet him in the middle of the hal. Why not? You said that for anybody you could greet. Says who he was the one that came to Ravin the Ravin. He wasn't considered significant to Ravin to even go out of his way to greet him. It's not because you need to have, let's say, like Mipnehakovic, because you need to have certain stringencies. No, you're allowed, you're allowed to really, really greet any single person because it's a day that there's no obligation to say a howl. However, he didn't greet him because it wasn't significant. He wasn't going to stop saying his howl for him. But the truth is, that's the difference between. Like we said, that Yom She'ena Yochid Goyim is a hal, it's, it's more lenient, it's only a minute, it doesn't have the same halachas as the regular hal and Megil. Now, as we, as we said, the Gemara continues on the related theme of Boimene Ashin, this was his name, Ashin asked, who is Tana de Mirabami, the same thing of, as we wrote on the board, that regarding a Tana de Bey, uh, someone from the Yeshiva asked Mirabami from the Rosh Hashiva, this time it was a different Rosh Hashiva and a different student, he asked him the following question. Hashar betainus. If someone's in the middle of a fast, a maushiyitim, what's the halacha? Is he allowed to just taste the food to know 
if it needs salt or it needs spices, which this is actually the halacha that we're discussing. So w- what's the question? Achil b'shtiyah kabbalah is that when he's fasting, what did he accept he's not going to do? He's not going to eat and drink. Balak, he's not eating and drinking, he's just tasting. Maybe no When you're fasting, you're accepting that it's a, a it's a food type of, but not just for eating and drinking. It's any pleasure. Boy, can you have pleasure when you're tasting? We know there's two types of pleasure: this taste, and then there's the eating, which is consumption. So maybe you do have benefit. So therefore, it would be forbidden. So Amalei said, and this is actually If someone is by a fast on a regular fast, you just want to see if it needs salt or spices. You actually allowed to taste it, and there's no problem at all. As long as you don't eat it, which is actually discussing the discussion in the halacha, but tanim alach similar in the brisa matemes. Someone who's just tasting the food and the turn the bracha, he doesn't even have to make a bracha. And this is the halacha too. Vashar betayin. If someone's in the middle of a fasting time, the im bekal klum, you'll have a taste, and there's nothing wrong. Says the gemara ad kama. How much can you taste? So Rabbi Verbasi, Tommy ad shir Rabbi Yasa. These two amiram, they would taste up until the Rabbi Yasa belug. Then, and that's all, all, all included in the permissibility because tasting is not considered like eating for a bracha and for a fast. Now, the Gemara continues in a related discussion from our, from our previous stuff, from the Mishnah regarding greeting someone mm-hmm. and doing that before davening, which is going to be asked in a contradiction from a halacha. Amarav says, <laughs> This is actually a halacha also brought that if someone goes to greet his friend before davening, it's like you made him into an altar that's for a different god. Shnemak says a pasuk in Yeshaya. It says chidul lachem, desist for you min adam from man. Ashen neshama ba'apa who has a breath in his nostril. Kibam nechshavu. For what are you considering him? What's his worth? Mean to say when you should be involved in the honor of God, don't go ahead and be involved in the honor of, of a human being. And as Rash explains, you have to say that's what the pasuk is saying. Because if not, why would you have to desist from a man? Obviously, because if you're supposed to go to God, don't go to a person. So on that, the drush is atikri ba'med. Don't read it with what elabama. Rather bama. It's like you're making him into an altar. Shmuel Amr, he says, no, he doesn't expound Bameh to read it Bama. He reads it literally. Bameh means to say, with what Bameh Nechshifu, whether you consider him significant, that you're going and you're giving his honor before me, Bameh Chashavti Lezeh, what are you considering him significant? Veloy Lahan, you're not going to God. Those are two different interpretations. We said that if you're going to greet someone else, you're either making him into Bama or Bameh Nechshifu. Now, that, the reason why we introduced this, because Masra Rav Sheshit. Shesh asks on these interpretations from the Allah of our Mishnah. Our Mishnah said in the previous staff, but Prakim between the chapters, Shayyab and Neha Kavit We are allowed to greet someone out of honor, and you're also allowed to return the greeting, which we said means so you don't have to say that for sure, you're allowed to return the greeting. Now the question is, that's by Krishma. Krishma is before Shema and Esrei. And you're saying you're allowed to greet someone. Didn't you say before Shema and Esrei, it's like going to make him a, a Bama, but man, next how can you greet someone by Bechers Krishma, which is before Shema and Esrei? So Tegum Rabab, Rabab interpreted that this halacha of Rabban Shmuel that said that it's forbidden to greet someone before Shemun Esrei is b'mashkim lepischei. It's when you're going to his doorway, you're going to greet him, you're, spe- you're specifically going out of your way, that is a halacha lamai, so you're not allowed to do that. If, you, if, you, if someone comes into shul over here and, and, and you happen to meet him, you meet him on the road, then you're allowed to go ahead and greet him. That's why it's not a contradiction. It depends if you're going to greet him, that is forbidden. But if it's just by cry, if you just happen to meet him, that's when we're saying, even in Birch's Krishma, your middle saying Krishna, someone comes into shul and you ha- he happens to come your way, then you're allowed to greet him, even, be, even though it's before Shemayin Esri. Now, the, we have these next words in parentheses, which the Gears says actually not to have it, but actually, as we'll see later on, the same Amara says another teaching, so we'll quote it because it seems to be obvious that it is a continuation. Amr B'yayin Amr B'zeri says, Whoever does his own private stuff that he's got to take care of before he davens, it's like as if he made an altar. Of Adam Alem, Amr Loi, they said to him, Bama Amr, you said really it's like making an altar? Amr Loi, he says, no, that's not what I said. Asr Kamin, I said it's prohibited. Which this is a continuation of what you're also not allowed to do before davening. Amr Avidi Barav and Amr Vitzchuk Barashin says also loy lo adam lasses chafetz of a person now let take care of his personal business kaidim she spell before davening this is a halacha lemaisa shenem like it says a pasuk can tell him tzedek righteousness which in this context tzedek means to say tfila because a person makes himself righteous in front of his creator when he prays to him lefun of yahalich in front of him he should go and only then vayosim laderek pama but then he should set his his footsteps on his path. Which means to go then to take care of his own needs. You see that tzedek, which is tefila, is before palma, before you go in and take care of your own things. Now, a, another interpretation from the same amar in the same pasuk and similar drasha. Says someone davens and then he goes out to take care of his business. God takes care of his personal needs. Shemek says over there in that same pasuk, tzedek lefun of Here it's being interpreted a little bit different. 
tzedek l'fan mihalach. If someone prays in front of him and he goes, then vayasam l'derek pamim is going on God. Then Hashem will place his footsteps on his path. Hashem will take care of his needs. Now, the next amayr, Omer b'yoyinim b'zera, is the amayr that was brought in the parentheses. That's why we read the parentheses, and that's why the Gemara seems to be saying the same amayr. Omer b'yoyinim b'zera says the following drasha: Kala lan shivis yam b'leicham. If someone sleeps seven days without dreaming, nikkur is called a bad person. Shem like says the pasuk initially. Besevei yolan that if he sleeps seated, meaning satisfied, bal yipakid ra, he's not going to be visited upon evil. That's the simple translation of the pasuk. Now the Gemara is going to bring two interpretations how to interpret this pasuk. I'll take a survey, I don't read it seated, ele sheva, rather, sheva yolen, bal yipked. If a person sleeps seven days without being visited from heaven with a dream, that is considered ra, and therefore they're not paying attention to, to that person. So as we wrote down, if you read the Pasuk, survey yolen, bal yipked, ra, you can read it, sheva yolen, bal yipked, then ra. That's the first interpretation. If you eat seven days without a dream, then they don't care about you. Now, a different interpretation. He says, Whoever satiates himself, he learns Torah and then he goes to sleep through the learning of the Torah. Then they don't give him any bad tidings. So, like it says in the Pasuk, where this interpretation is saying, if he sleeps sated, which is with the words of Torah, then he's not going to be visited with any evil, he's not going to have any bad tidings. Now, going back to the Allah of Mishnah, we said that, okay, you're allowed to, there's a machlik exactly who you're allowed to greet, and if, to greet him, to return the greeting, there was a machlik remain in Behuda, but everyone agreed to the criterion, which is between the chapters, and there, that it's, it's more severe in the middle of the chapters. Now, but as our Gemara quotes from the Mishnah, but the Mishnah said, Elohim bein aprakim, these considered between the chapters, v'chul, etc., where one of the between the chapters is between the parasha v'yoymer, and the next parish of Emes of Yatsab, Emes of Amun, which is Birch's Krishma. You're going from Krishma to Birch's Krishma, it's between the chapters. But still, there was a machlek in the Mishra. Who the hell? No. Between the chapter of Yoimer and Emes of Yatsab, Emes of Amun, you're not allowed to interrupt, which is between the words of Hashem Lekechim, which are the last words of Yoimer, and Emes of Yatsab, Emes of Amun. Now, on that number, it says, This is the halacha. Allah is Krabi Huda. We rule like Krabi Huda. You're not allowed to interrupt between Hashem Lekechim and Emes of Yatsab. Now, and that continues the Gemara from the same Amar, Amar, Bevo, Amar, Beichanon. says, My time to be what's reason to be Yehuda? Isn't it considered Bein HaProkham? Why over here is it more severe? Says the Gemara, because it's a Pasuk in Yirmi, as we continue to come at base. The Pasuk says, Vashem Eloi Kim Emes, and Hashem the God is truth. Therefore, you can't interrupt between Hashem Lekechem Emes, because although really Hashem Lekechem is the last words, you look at Vayem in the Torah, it doesn't go Hashem Lekechem Emes the way we say it. It ends Hashem Lekechem. Emes is part of Emes V'yatsev, Emes V'emunah. But it really is between the chapters. Yes, but there's another Pasuk that we want to say, Hashem, the God, is truth. So although Emes is really part of the next chapter, we don't want to interrupt between those two because we want to keep the theme of Hashem L'Kechem Emes. Now, based on this, I would be going to ask the following question. Okay, fine. So you're saying Hashem L'Kechem Emes because you don't want to interrupt. But now, Chayz V'ayim Emes, do you go and say Emes another time because really it's part of Emes V'yatsev, Emes V'emunah? Or maybe you don't say it again the second time. So it's actually Machlekes. Amr V'am Rabbi Yechon. And it says, Chayz V'ayim Emes. You go ahead and you say over the word Emes. Rabbi Amr says, Ain the Chayz V'ayim Emes. You don't say it over. You say it one time. You just don't interrupt. But it's really the Emes of Emes V'yatsev. You just put it together with Shem L'Kechem Emes. Now, the Gemara actually brings a story to illustrate this opinion of Rabbah, who says, you don't repeat it. There was a certain person that went in front of Rabbah, that was davening, and Shami Rabbah, the Emes, Emes, trays him. The Rabbah overheard him that he was saying the word Emes two times, like the other opinions that say you have to repeat it. <coughs> so, Amar Rabbah, Rabbah said, Kol Emes, Emes, Tafsi Lahai. This person has like a stutter. He has like a stream of the word Emes that's grabbing him like a, a crank. He's just saying it again. Emes, Emes, meaning he was just saying that like, that's not the halacha. You don't have to say the word Emes two times. Now, Continuing on this theme that we just said about Shemlekechem Emes, regarding the third parasha of Krishna, that of Ayyemer. So, Anadigmar continues regarding this of saying the parasha of Ayyemer at nighttime. Amr of Yisab, he says, Kamam al Yehoshmaitz, he says, How good is this teaching? The Chiyasa, Rav Shmuel by Yehud, when Rav Shmuel by Yehud, he came from Eretz Yisrael. Amr, he said the following teaching that is so good that Amr ben Marav Arvis said, In Eretz Yisrael in the West, they say at Mayr of time, they say the third parasha, this is how they say it. Dabel b'nei Yisrael v'amart aleim, speak to the Jewish people and tell them. Then they skip the whole Vayemer, basically, and they just go, Ani Hashem l'kechem emes, I am Hashem your God, that is true. And that's how they say Kriyashma at nighttime. They don't say the whole parish of tzitzis, because there's no halach of tzitzis at nighttime, because it has to be very easy, and you don't see the tzitzis at nighttime. But they start the parish of Vayemer, then they stop, and then they skip, and then they say Hashem l'kechem emes. On that, asked the Gemara, Omele Abayah, Abayah asked him, Maimal Yusuf, why is this a good teaching? 
He says, Lo yaschel, don't start, meaning you don't have to start by your metal by my time. Then if you did start, then you have to finish it. So how could, don't start, but if you're starting, then you can't just skip, you have to say the whole thing. Now, maybe you're going to say, oh, oh, that wasn't considered, quote, starting. But he says, no, if you just said the first passage of speak to the Jewish people, that's not considered the beginning. But but telling them those words, it's already started, considered beginning. And you're saying in Eretz Yisrael, they say that already. So why is that a good teaching? If anything, that's the wrong teaching. You already considered starting. You should have to say the whole thing. So my papa says, yeah, but Kasavi Bamarav in the West, they disagree and they hold that Vamarta Leim, Nami Lahabaschala. That's not considered starting the parsha of Tzitzis, at the Amma Vaslam Tzitzis, until you say the word, and that they should make for them Tzitzis. And therefore, since it's not considered quote starting, they were able to, to just say that beginning and then skip and then go to the end. Now, Lahalacha Mabaye says, Hilkas, therefore, we, we have the stringencies of both. Anan Askuli Maskalinan. We start the Pasha of the Yemen, the Komaskali Bamarav, because in there so they quote started. Now, but keeping us clean, but once we start, Migma Nami Gamrina, we also have to finish it. We don't do like in the West that they skip the whole thing. The Amarav Khan Maravi says, Lo Yaschel, then Hisl Gamer. And if you start, then you should finish it, and we consider it as having started. Now, however, the Gemara brings a Chiba Rav Amar. He says, No. Amar, if someone said, Ani Hashem Lekechem, which, as Rashi explains, means to say, if someone said the parsha of Tzitzes, then Sarukh Leimah Emes. Then he has to go ahead and say Emes, like it says in the Pasuk, as we mentioned before, Hashem Lekim Emes. But loyam ani Hashem lekechem. If it doesn't say ani Hashem lekechem, ain't it zorich leh? Ain't it zorich leh? Emes. You don't have to say emes, meaning you don't have to say, according to the way the Mefarshim explains this, you don't have to say the whole parsha of tzitzis, which is the whole parsha of Yemen. You don't have to say emes. You don't have to say the whole parsha of emes v'amuna, because now you understand the Gemara's next question. How can you say at night time you don't have to say the whole parsha of Yemen? And therefore, if you're not saying vayyemes, so you're not saying Hashem lekechem, so therefore you don't have to say emes v'amuna and the whole thing. But But you have to mention Yitzis Mitzrayim. The Mishnah taught in the previous stuff in Yudbeiz of Abbeiz that we mentioned Yitzis Mitzrayim at night times. Now, if you're not going to say Emes Vemuna and you're not going to say the Parsha of Tzitzis, were you mentioning Yitzis Mitzrayim? We mentioned Yitzis Mitzrayim in Vayyem and we mentioned it throughout the whole Emes Vemuna. If you're not saying either one of them, how are you fulfilling the obligation of saying leaving Egypt at night time? <coughs> Says the Gemara, yeah, you're right, because the Amahachi, they make like this amended text. The, those who skip Vayyem and Emes Vemuna, they say, a prayer that we don't know of. It's like we, we, we give thanks to the front of you, Hashem our God. That you took us out of the land of Egypt. So they're mentioning it's Yitzhak time. If the son may be Savadim and you redeemed us from the house of slaves, the Asisalonu Nisim Gvuras Aliyam, you did for us miracles and might on the sea. Bisharnulach, and we thanked you, and they go right into what did we sing to you? Micha Micha Ba'ilam Hashem, Machuscha Rabanach until Gal Yisrael and Hashkibenu. And then they go into my but you're right, they skipped the whole Bayamer and Emes Bemuna. Going back to the Allah of Mishnah. So our Mishnah said, Amir Bishu ben Karach, it says, Lama kadma parsha shema v'chulu. He asks, why is it the order of shema, and then vay mishmai, and then vay yemen? Now, Tayson points out, why is that a question? Shema comes before vay mishmai in the Torah. So it says, no, because ultimately the parsha of tzitz is of yemen is actually before shema and vay mishmai. So if you're going in order, then vay yemen should have been before the two of them. Obviously, it's just what we know is, ain mukta mukta by Torah, we don't go with the order of the Torah. So then if that's the case, actually you should have said vahaya before shema, because vahaya is at least in the plural. And then say shema, which is in the singular. So on that side, Yerushim and Karcha, the reason is because first you want them to call Olmach Shemayim, like we wrote on the board, that's one interpretation, <coughs> then Ol, ol Mitzvahs, and then Tzitzit, which only applies during the daytime. That's the opinion of Yerushim and Karcha. Now, Tanya Lutner writes another interpretation why it's in this order. Yerushim ben Yechai, I mean, says, Bedinhu shayak mishma levay mishmai. It says, no, logic tells us that you should first have Shema and then Pasha levay mishmai. Why? Shazeh lomoy, because the Pasha of Shema talks about learning. It says, Bedibar bum, you should speak in this, which means to learn Torah. And the Holy is regarding teaching. It says, You should teach your sons. Now, if you didn't learn yourself first, how are you going to teach your sons? So, therefore, it makes sense. First, Shema, and then Vayim Shemaya. Now, Vayim Shemaya, Vayim and you should have Vayim Shemaya before Vayim Shemaya. And the Girs is brought, Shazel Lamid. Shema, Vayim Shemaya is to teach. Vayim Shemaya is to do. And the whole Vayim doesn't say anything about learning, it just talks about doing certain mitzvahs. So, first, you learn and you teach. So, you know the, 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 the laws, and then you go ahead and practice it. Now that is the Gemara in this interpretation of Shema Yichai. What are you saying? You're saying you say Shema because it talks about learning. And and Vahim Shema has Lamed and Vahim has to do. Is that really so? Shema doesn't talk about to teach and to do. But Vaksiv is a Pasik in Shema that says, Vishinantam, you should teach your sons. Ukshartam, Ukshartam, it says you should tie it on your arms and you should write on your doorpost. So it talks about both teaching and regarding doing. But soon, moreover, 
similar question. You tell me the second part of the Laman who the Ispe and only talks about teaching Malasa less, but it doesn't have doing, you're saying that's only by Bayamer. But Vaksiv the Pasik says, Ukshartem says to tie the Tfilin on your arms, Ukhsafti Mishra the Mazuzis, which are talking about doing. So I could say only Bayamer has doing. So the rather says the Gemara the Hokman, this is what we meant to say. It makes sense to have Shema before Vahim Shemaya because Shazel Limud Ulalamid Velasas, because Shema has all three to learn, to teach, and to do. Now, Vahim Shemaya Labayayma, whereas Vahim Shemaya has only uh, two of them. And Vahim Shemaya comes before Vahim Shazel Yesh Balalamid Velasas. Vahim Shemaya doesn't have about learning, it has about teaching and doing. And Vahim Shemaya El Elasas Bavadi, Vahim only has to do that itself. So, therefore, that's why the order is Shema has the most. Vayim Shemaya comes in second place, and Vayim comes in third place, therefore it's in that order. Now, ask the Gemara, but Tebek Lemin Jub Menkarcha, why do you need Rib Shem Mechai's interpretation? Isn't it enough because Rib Shem Menkarcha said of Ol Mach Shemaim, Ol Mitzis, and Vayim? Says the Gemara, you're right, Chadav Oid Kamar, which is this a concept mentioned many times in Shas, it's one and another. Chadav, first of all, Kadesh Kabbalah, Ol Mach Shemaim Tchila, Vach Kabbal Kabbalah, Ol Mitzis, you're right. First, it's Yesh Shema, because then you could accept the sovereignty of God, and then to do his Mitzis. Because also because all these other things, because Shema has limit lamed velasas, therefore it comes first before Vayim Shemaya. Now, the Gemara introduces a story that is being introduced over here because it's going to think that Rav was going like Rabbi Shuba Karcho, who we just we just quoted his interpretation from the Mishnah. So the Gemara introduced the following story: Rav Mashi Yadi. One time it happened that they saw Rav do this following thing. He got up in the morning. He washed his hands. Vakar Krishma, I said Krishma, Vanach Tfilin, he put on Tfilin, and then Mitzali, and then he died. On that, as the Gemara, the Hechi Abarachi, how could he do this that he put on, that he said Krishma before he put on Tfilin? But the Tanya Linda Bryce said that you see the order is not like that. You're supposed to first put on Tfilin and then, then say Krishma. Why? A totally unrelated halacha. The Bryce says as follows If someone's digging out a Kuch, a Kuch was in the Talmudic times, the biblical times, they used to carve out graves in a cave. It had a length of four amas and a width of seven tfachim, that they would bury people in these caves. As we know by the, by the pharaohs, we, they, that's how they buried them. So if someone's digging it out for a dead person, so he's being isig b'mitz, he's involved in the midst of burying a dead person. So potem, krishma, menatvila, menatvilin, He's exempt from Krishma, Davening, Tvilin, the Mikomits of Muzbat Torah, all the mitzvahs that are said in the Torah, because as the concept of, as we said in the previous, on the previous parak on the Fiyad Al-Manal, someone's busy with a mitzvah, he's exempt from doing another mitzvah. Like it says, you only have to say Krishma when you're sitting in your house doing your own thing. But when you're busy with a mitzvah, then you're going to be exempt. So this, pasa, this person doesn't have to do any mitzvahs. Now, he gives him on Krishma. What happens if it reaches the time of Krishma? So, he comes out, he washes his hands, and this is the, where the primary question is from. He puts on tefillin, and then the curve Krishma Mispal, then he says Krishma he davens. So, but before the Gemara comes to the question, the Gemara first asks a contradiction in the Bryce itself. Hagufa Kasha, you have a contradiction. Reisha, I'm a pater, and in the beginning of the Bryce, you said that, no, oh, you don't have to say Krishma, you don't have to daven, you don't have to put on tefillin, and then at the end, you said, oh, when he reaches the Krishma, come out and then say Krishma. Says Gemahalikash, not a difficulty. Safer betray. The safer is told when there's two people. And it's saying, if there's two people digging the grave, you leave your friend digging, you come out, you fulfill the myths of Krishna and Tfilin, and then you go back to work. And then when you come back and you continue good digging, then your friend goes out and he puts on Tfilin and he says Krishna and he davens. The Rasha Bachad, the Rasha someone, there's only one person to dig. You're the only one digging, so then you're, you're the one busy with the mitzvah bearing the dead, then you don't have to go ahead and say Krishma, even when it's not Krishma. So that resolves the Brysa. But says the Gemara, but one thing is difficult, Rav, because what do you see from the Brysa? What's the order? The order that it says for the person who has to come out is to put on film and then say Krishma. How did he say Krishma and then put on film? Says the Gemara, and this is why we brought in this discussion, Rav Kribishu ben Karchas He holds a Kribishu ben Karchas from my Mishnah. Dama, what do you say the order is supposed to be? Oh, Malchus Shemayim Tchila. First, you accept the sovereignty of the God's kingdom from heaven. That's Krishma. Vachkech el Mitzis. And then the yoke of Mitzis, which putting on Tfilin is the yoke of Mitzis. Therefore, he first said Krishma and then put on Tfilin. You're right, the Bryce is not like him, but he holds a Kribishu ben Karchas, which the order is no. Oh, Malchus Shemayim, and then no Mitzis. Says the Gemara, Eimadam Kribishu ben Karcha. When did he say it? Lahak Makri Lakriya. Regarding recitation, recital, you say Shema, which is Kabbalah's al Mach Shemaim, before Vahim Shemaya, which is Kabbalah's al Mitzvah. Kriya la Asiya. But saying something, which is Shema, before doing something, which is the actual putting on the Tvilm, Mishamale, did we hear that he says such a thing? We never found that he's different than that, Bryce, that your order is Tvilm and Kriya Shema. How can you say Rav is going like a Shema Karacha? 
The Su moreover says the Gemara, how could you even think to say this answer? Me savalei kribishu mekarcha. Does Rav even hold kribishu mekarcha? But we're going to see that he doesn't hold like this interpretation that you're saying. Because of Amrav Chia Barashi, he said zimn sagin have a kim the kamei the Rav. Many times I was fond of Rav, who he's the proponent of the story that we're talking about. Umaktem he would get up in the morning. Umashi yadi would wash his hands. Umavarich he would make birchas hatayra. Umasni lampir can he would teach us a chapter of learning which. According to Rashi, because he didn't have a certain gears of our text, he says, from here is the proof that you see, wait a second, he went to learn Taira, which is doing a mitzvah before Malch HaShemayim, before he said Krishma. Or, the, it's brought down, our gears has, Umanach Tvilm, he put on Tvilm, Vahadukar Krishma, and then he said Krishma. So one thing is that you see, is that he first did Tvilm, and then said Krishma. How could you say that he holds, you have to say Krishma, and then Tvilm, because Malch HaShemayim, and then mitzvahs. You see he himself many times, first put on Tvilm, and then said Krishma. Now, Vachitim, you're going to say that no, it's not true. But the Lord Mot is man Krishma. The reason why he went and put on Tfil, or he learned Taira before Krishma, was because it wasn't the time of Krishma. That's why he did it first. But if it was the time, he would have said Krishma first. But in Ken, if that's the case, Maya Sadate to Rav Barashi, then what exactly is Rav Chia Barashi's testimony that he's that he's saying something novel? What's the Chiddush then? If it wasn't Zman Krishma, of course you could do, go ahead and learn and do whatever it is. You're not you're not doing the wrong order. <laughs> Obviously, it is that no, even though it was Zman Krishma, he first put on film, he first learned Torah, and then he said Krishma. Well, that contradicts the previous story that you said no. He holds like Shuman Karcha that first you have to say Krishma and then put on film. So the Gemara says, no, it's not a right. Really, I could tell you that, yeah, maybe it was before Zman Krishma. Then you ask him, before Zman Krishma, so therefore you're saying, so that's why he learned Tyro because he put on film because it wasn't yet Zman Krishma, so it wasn't the wrong order. Really, he holds he's supposed to always do Krishma first. So what's the Chiddush then in saying that he did that? It wasn't Zman Krishma. So the Gemara, yeah, it was Lafuki Mimandama. The, the testimony was for a different point. It was coming to exclude from the opinion that holds, as we quote in the previous half, the Mishnah in Tzarek Lebaruch. It's a big machlik is regarding what do you have to say Bechat Satayra on. One opinion says only for Chumash, one says for Mishnah, one says for Medjish, one says for Gemara. So he was coming to say, not like the opinion that holds that, on, that for Mishnah, that you don't have to make a bracha, Kamash Malan, he, for the, why he was saying over this thing that many times I saw Rab do this following thing, was to tell you the Mishnah, not Mitzvah that also for Mishnah, you always have to make a bracha. But he wasn't coming to tell you regarding the order. Nothing to do with the order. The reason why he put on Tefillin to learn Torah before Krishma was simply because it wasn't my Krishma yet. But really, he holds like the previous narrative, like Rabbi Shubham Karcha, that first you have to make a bracha, Omar Shemayim, and then Om Mitzvah. It says the Gemara, but still we would have a difficulty. Kasha la Rav, we have a difficulty with Rav itself. You have a contradiction. What's the halacha? Do you say that he, he was mocked in Krishma before davening? Yet here we see in the Brisa clearly that you're supposed to uh, put on tefillin and then say Krishma. You're right, for Rav himself, that, that we, for, for, the, for what, why he switched this in this last narrative that we said many times he did this, he put on tefillin before Krishma, okay, that's not a difficulty. Why? Because it was before Zman Krishma. Okay, so but when it is Zman Krishma, you tell me Rav holds, first say Krishma and then put on Tvilm. Mal Chashemayim and then Ol Mitzvah. But the Brice contradicts him. The Brice says no, the, that the order is Tvilm and then Krishma. Says the Gemara, no, the really Rav himself holds like the Brice. That first he's supposed to put on Tvilm and then you say Krishma. But Shlucha, who the office? It's the Shlich, the, shlich, the agent, the messenger that he messed up. The one who was supposed to bring this Tvilm, he got delayed. Problem is, it was a Krishma, and this is how local mice and many people practice this that you got to say Krishma so that you don't miss the time, so therefore you say Krishma before putting on film. And when the Shlich came, then they put on film, and that's why the one time they saw him saying Krishma, then film, even though it was a Krishma, and you should put on film first, like Rav himself holds as many times as he himself put on film, and then Krishma, as we see from the Brisa. But there was no film, so he has to say Krishma. But really, it's still and then Krishma. As the Gmar actually proves this point, Amar Ula says, Kolakar Krishma, but like Tfilin, whoever says Krishma without wearing Tfilin, he made Eid It's like he's saying false testimony in himself, which Rashi says is euphemistic. It's really referring to God. It's like you're saying false testimony. God says, the parasha that you're saying of Shema says to put on Tfilin. And guess what? You're saying it without putting on Tfilin. So obviously, you're supposed to put on Tfilin and then say Krishma because, like, you're saying false testimony against God. And he says, it's like as if you sacrifice a totally burnt sacrifice without the flower offering, meaning the Pasuk obligates when you bring a carbon oil, the Pasuk says that together with the totally burnt sacrifice, you're supposed to bring a sira sa'efa, a tenth of ephah of flour. And that's supposed to come together with the oil. And if you bring your oil without the mincha, it's not complete. So too, if one says Krishma and doesn't fulfill it, he's not wearing the film, he also did not really complete. It's like he didn't complete the mitzvah of, of saying Krishma. And it's also the Zevech is like bringing a carbon shlamim without its libations, which is the wine that was poured on the Mizbeach. 
after you brought a carbon oil and a shlamim, like the Pasik says over there, Chatziahin, all the libations. Now, Rashi actually points out that the Gemara could have said, it's as if you brought a carbon oil without the mincha and the nesachim, because oil also requires nesachim, not just the zevach, not just the shlamim. It's just that the Gemara is picking the lashon of the Pasik, which says, oil or mincha, zevach or nesachim. <laughs> but it means that you haven't completed it. If you're doing Krishma without film, you haven't really done the whole thing, you're missing an integral part. Now, Continuing from the same Amar of Amar B'yechanan, he says that this order that we said that you have to have a certain order, it has to be first Tfilin and then Krishma. So he says a similar halach. He says, Someone wants to accept upon himself a complete acceptance of God's sovereignty of, on himself. So as we continue to talk about Aleph, you should do the following order. Yifna, you should relieve yourself. Go to the bathroom. V'yitil yadav, wash your hands. Meaning you're supposed to wash your hands before, but then after you relieve yourself, then you're supposed to also wash your hands, then you put on tefillin, and then you say krishma, and then you daven, which that's the order that we do. That's a complete acceptance of God's sovereignty. Because you're supposed to relieve yourself so you have a clean body. And then the Gemara is going to explain this idea about also washing your hands. Because And we also spoke about before about putting on tefillin before saying krishma. We know you're supposed to put, say krishma before davening because the smich is gula tefillin. So Amar B'chibar Abba, Amar B'chibar Abba, from the same Amar says, Kalanifna v'noitl yadav. Whoever relieves himself. He washes his hands. <laughs> he puts on film, and he says and he says and he davens. It's like it's like an awesome order. If you could see this this hierarchy, how it goes, it's amazing. It's like as if you built an altar for Hashem. Vikur love carbon and you sacrifice the carbon. That's similar it says a Pasik and Tilim. It says Erchatz I'm going to wash with cleanliness my palms, which it, it has a double meaning. Washing the hands, but also we always know that a person stretched out his hands when he davened. So it also talks about regarding davening. And if someone's going to do that, he's going to wash his hands, he's going to daven, he's going to do the whole order we mentioned. And I'm going to circle around your mezbeach Hashem. Meaning to say, if someone washes his hands and he davens, it's as if he's going around the mezbeach of Hashem, as if he built a mezbeach and he's, he sacrificed a karmat Hashem. Now, Amalei Rav, he adds on a little bit more. He says, Doesn't the master hold that it's, it's even more? It's kilo tovel, that's if he immersed himself in the mikvah. So it's like it says over in the Pasuk, I will wash with cleanliness, which sounds like I'm going to wash my whole body. Because v'loi kos of archetz kapi. It doesn't say, I will wash my palms. So rather, it's coming to make a drasha to tell you that the reward of washing one's hands in the morning until his time, it's as if he immersed his whole body. Now, However, although there's an obligation to wash your hands before you daven, Amalei Ravina Rabba, Ravina said to Rabba, Chazimar, let the master say, Haytubim Rabbanan, there's a certain Talmudic scholar, the Asim and Rabba, they came from the West here to Babel, Vaman, they said the following interesting halacha, said, Misha in Lemayim Lechaz Yadav, if someone doesn't have water to wash his hands, you know what he could do? Mikanech Yadav Ba'afri, could wipe his hands, and this is actually the halacha, if you don't have water, you wipe your hands on earth, or bitzrar, on pebbles, or bikismis, or on some type of wood chips, and that's enough. So Amalei, so Rav said to him, Shaper Kama, this Talmudic scholar, he's saying well. Because Miksiv Erchatz Benayim, does the Pasuk say, I will wash with water? No, Benikoying Siv, with leanliness it's written. Which means, Kol Medi Demanke, anything that will clean your hand. Meaning if you wipe yourself on the flat surface, it's, gonna, it's also going to wipe off your hand if it was dirty from anything. That's sufficient after the fact for Natila Sidaim in the morning. As the Gemara actually illustrates this, the Harav Chiz delight, or Harav Chiz would actually curse, Amanda Mahadra Maya be eaten slusa. Someone that at the time of davening, he would, where's water, where's water, where's water, he would curse him. Because what are you doing? You don't need water. If you don't have water, you can wipe your hands on anything that it can be wiped. Now, the Gemara actually qualifies this teaching of Rav Chizda. The Hanimili, and this is, this is actually the halacha, that's la kriyishma. Meaning, it's when the Zman kriyishma, and it, which has a set time, you might miss the Zman kriyishma. For that, if you can't find water, don't go chasing after water. Just wipe your hands. But for davening, which is all day, is its time, then the mahad, and then the person should go after water. Now, the ad kama, for davening, let's say, how far should a person go for water? So it's ad parsa, up until, uh, which is this, is actually the halacha. If someone doesn't have water and he has to daven, he has to go up until like around the period of three miles for, to get water. Now, the Gemara qualifies this teaching too. When did we say that you have to go so far to get water? Is likame. Only if you're on a journey. You're going in a certain direction anyway. So then, and you want to stop to daven, no, continue going for a period of three miles to get water. And this is the halacha too, because most people are not on a journey. You're at your house, you're in the shul. But going backwards, which means, say, if you're stationary and you're going to actually be losing ground, then a fill a mill in the chedz. And then even for a distance of a mill, which is around 4,000 feet, even that you don't have to go back for now. The Gemara makes an inference. I mean, no, okay, the inference is, you're right, mill in the chedz. You don't have to go 4,000 feet if you don't have water. 
But hapachas mimil chayzeh. But if it's less than a mil, then you would have to go. Meaning going backwards. Meaning if someone's stationary, if you're in shul, if you're at home, and you want to daven, you would have to go up until a period of four, uh, a distance of four thousand feet to go ahead and find water before one goes and davens. And we spoke about today's daf. Continuing on this parak, you carry the second parak of Sechnes Brachas Daf Yudal. We continue with the halacha of the previous Mishnah, which opened up the parak regarding the laws of interrupting, which we had been speaking about Birchas Kriyishma and Kriyishma. So then the Gemara continued relatedly regarding Halil and Megillah. On the one hand, we said Kriyishma is Deraisa, and you interrupt. So for sure, Halil Megillah, which only Drabban and Kavochayim that you would interrupt, or that you say no, Pesume Nisa, maybe that's better, that's more severe. You don't want to stop at all to greet another person. The Gemara concludes that. It, you could be mafsi. Now, the Gemara pointed out that Yamim She'in Hayach Goimer Ahal, on the days when the individual, although the word Goimer again usually means to complete, but uh, now the, 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 the Rishayim explained that it means say that a day when the person doesn't have to say Hal, which is only a minig like a Mershchidish, then this Molinia, then you could even respond to anyone that doesn't have the same stringencies, even of having certain limited types of interruptions that you could do. Now, then the Gemara continued with a similar, because it mentioned Tan de Bay, and that the Rebbe answering Eim Mekach Klum, so then the Gemara introduced a different question with that same introduction. Is tasting like eating regarding a fast day and regarding a bracha? And the halacha is actually, it's not the same thing. You're allowed to taste to see if it needs salt or spices on the tainus, and you don't have to make a bracha. Up until Revi of Eloig, which the Machlik is in the Rishayim and, and halacha, even could you swallow it, but ultimately tasting is not like eating. Then the Gemara continued with, which relates back to the halacha of Amishnah, that one is not supposed to greet another person before he davens. And if one does, it's like the passage, Bamen Nechshavu, what's this person considered significant? You're doing him before God. Or it's like as if you built a bama. So, but then the Gemara asks, but our Mishnah was speaking about that you're allowed to greet another person by Birchus Krishma. Now, Birchus Krishma comes before Shema Nesri. How could you be greeting another person by Birchus Krishma if you say you're not greeting another person before, before Shema Nesri? And that the Gemara said, well, it depends. If you're seeking him out, then it's like making a bummer. But if you happen to see him in shul and you're in the middle of Birchus Krishma, he goes, hey, what's doing? Uh, and then you're by Birchus Krishma, then you could interrupt. That's not considered a problem. And additionally, what you're not allowed to do before you daven is you're also lost as chavetim. You're not supposed to take care of your own private needs before davening. If one davens and then does his needs, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will help him take care of his needs. Then the same Amoira went and interpreted a Pasuk. The simple translation of the Pasuk is, Savea Yolen, he's going to sleep at night time, while you puck it around, nothing bad is going to be visited upon him. But the same Amoira, who had recorded before, says a drasha. Savea Yolen, Bal Yipakid, if someone is going to go seven nights without a dream, that means he wasn't visited, Ra, he's called bad. Then they more about another interpretation that, no, it means to say, Savea Yolen, if someone's going to go to sleep satiated from the words of Torah at night time, and he's going to go to sleep, Bal Yipakid Ra, he's not going to be visited with any bad. Then we went back to the Allah of the Mishnah. We had a Machlekes in the Mishnah. Are you allowed to interrupt between Hashem like Kechem and Emes? And the Allah is like Rabbi Huda, that you're not allowed to, because like a Pasuk says, Hashem Elekem Emes, and therefore we don't want to interrupt, although Emes is really part of the next parasha, we don't want to interrupt because we want to say the message that God is true. Then we had a Machlekes regarding, do we even say Vayim at night time? Now, the truth is, if you start, then you have to finish. But then there was a machlik, is what's considered starting? Us, that we start, because in, in the West they start, and we consider that as starting, so we finish, we say the whole thing. And according to either interpretation, you didn't mention Yitzhi Sam somehow, either with a new text or something, but you have to say Yitzhi Sam Balelis, as we said in the previous Mishnah, from the first parak. Then the Gemara went to say, why do we have the order Shema Vahim Shemayim Yemer? So in the Mishnah, Bishub and Karcha said, okay, Kashma is Omar HaShemayim, Vahayi is the old mitzvahs, because it talks about doing the mitzvahs, and Vahayimer, since it's the, the, the most narrow, which is only by daytime, which it sits, so that we say the last. Now, Bishub and Yichai said a different interpretation. Shema has three things, Lilmoid, Lalamid, Velasas, Vahayi only has Lalamid, Velasas, Vahayimer has only Velasas, therefore you do that order. Now, the reason why that's important is because the Gemara continues, and in the Havimina thinks that Rav, follows Rabbi Shubha Karcha. Why? Because one time they saw that he said Kriyishma first and then put on Tfilm. Why did he do it in that order? Because, oh, Kriyishma is Omar Shemaim. Tfilm is mitzvahs, so therefore he did it in that order. The Gemara said, no, that can't be, because Rabbi Shubha Karcha only said by Kriya. Rather says the Gemara that, no, Rav holds, as we saw in the Brisa, that you have to put on Tfilm and then say Kriyishma. We saw that in the Brisa, talking about digging, digging the graves. And it says, if he, ha- if, if he has two people digging, he comes up, he puts on Tfilm and then says Kriyishma, which is not like the, the order that Rav did. And the Gemara proves that point later on, because if you don't do Tfilm and then Kriyishma, it's like either you're saying false testimony, because the 
So you're, what you're saying is to put on film, and you're not wearing film when you're saying that thing. And also, it's like bringing a crumb without a mincha. The story was over here that he did Krishma and film was because the shliach didn't bring the film. It's my Krishma, it's my Krishma. And there's no film. He had to say Krishma and then put on film. But the, the reason why the person said over the story was for a different reason. That was only to tell you that you say Birch HaSatayu on Mishnayis. But the truth is, is that the halacha is that you put on film and then Krishma. And that was a one time story simply because of the fact that there was no film. The Gemara concludes with the morning routine. We said that there's a routine of tefillin and krishma. So the Gemara goes through a routine which is relieve yourself, wash your hands, put on tefillin, say krishma, and then daven, and then there's HaKadosh Baruch Hu will, is considered all makabal ma'chashmaim tefillin. Now, regarding the halacha of washing your hands, the Gemara said that if there's no water, then you could wipe your hands in whatever called midi de monkey, whatever could wipe your hands off. Pebbles, earth. Now, moreover, it's actually forbidden to try to go find water at Zman Krishma. Zman Krishma, don't go trying to find water, you're going to miss the time of Krishma. Now for davening, if it's in front of you, you're on the journey, then you do have to go after water till a, 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 a distance of a parcel, which is around three miles. Now, but if you're stationary, or let's say it would be, have to make you go backwards, then it's open only until a mill, not, not, not a mill, but less than that, up until a distance of 4,000 feet, one would be required to go after water. Thank you, Torah, any time for hosting us on this share.